In this video, we introduce you to an understanding and knowledge of the basic internal components of a computer system, including the processor, main memory, buses, and the input output controllers. So what exactly is a computer? Well, it's an electronic device that takes input, processes data, and delivers output. So here we see the input is 5, the process is multiplied by 2, and the output is therefore 10. However, the input could just as easily be from a game's console controller in the form of button presses. This is then processed by the graphics processing unit inside the machine, and relayed as output in the form of visual to the screen and audio through speakers. The important bit here is the middle part, the process, the thing that turns the input into outputs. To do this, computers follow a set of instructions known as a program. Almost no two personal computers look the same, but if you take the case off, they will all share some key components. A power supply, of course, and then a motherboard, with various other components plugged into it, such as processor, main memory, hard drive, graphics card, and input and output ports. Here we see an abstraction of a computer system. The input and output devices on the left, they're plugged into the main PC via input output controllers, and then we have the main memory or RAM on the right connected with a series of buses. At a high level, you need to know the following four basic components of a computer system. The processor, CPU, main memory, RAM, the buses, and the I.O. controllers. Let's look at each of those in turn now. The central processing unit, CPU, or processor as it's often called, is the brain of the computer system. The processor is responsible for processing instructions that drive the overall system. It contains the control unit, the arithmetic logic unit, the ALU, and registers. The control unit ensures the smooth operation of the processor by repeating three instructions, fetch, decode, and execute. And we look at the contents of the process from the fetch code execute cycle in more detail in later videos on this topic. Random access memory, RAM, also known as main memory, is a critical component in all computing devices. It acts as short term memory, where the operating system, applications, and the data currently in use are kept so they can be quickly reached by the device's processor. Imagine RAM as an office desk where you keep documents and tools you're currently working with for quick, easy access. Without the desk, you'd have to store everything in drawers, boxes and filing cabinets. And this is akin to a hard drive or a solid state drive, which would then take you longer to access when needed. In a similar fashion, RAM holds the data and programs your computer is actively using, allowing for quick read and write operations. An input-output controller, or more simply I.O. controller, acts as a mediator between the computer's processor and the peripheral devices attached to it, such as keyboards, mice, printers, storage, etc. Imagine a train station with trains. Think of these as data. Travelling to and from various destinations are peripheral devices. The I.O. controller is like the station master or manager who coordinates which train goes to which platform, manages the schedules, and ensures passengers, our data packets, reach their intended destination safely and efficiently. This coordination is crucial for the smooth operation of the computer system, allowing data to move swiftly and without confusion. So now let's look at the buses. A bus is a set of parallel wires connecting two or more components of a computer. The processor is connected to main memory by three separate buses. When the processor needs to access main memory, it sends the address it wishes to access to memory along the address bus. The data in that memory location is then returned to the processor via the data bus, and control signals such as read or write are sent along the control bus. So let's look at each bus in a bit more detail. Let's start with the control bus. 
This carries the command and control signals to and from every other component of the CPU or computer. For example, if data is being read from or written to a device by the CPU, the read or write signal will be active, letting all devices know what's going on. The control bus is fully bidirectional for all devices connected to it. The data bus carries the binary ones and zeros that make up the actual information being transmitted around the CPU and computer. The data bus is not bidirectional in all circumstances. The address bus communicates the physical addresses of computer memory elements or locations that the requesting device wants to access, in other words, read and write. The width of an address bus determines how much memory can be accessed. For example, a 16-bit wide address bus reaches across 2 to the power of 16 locations, that's 65,000 or 64k worth of memory locations. Whereas a 32-bit address bus can address 2 to the power of 32 locations, that's roughly 4 billion or 4 gigabytes worth. The address bus is unidirectional. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What are the main components of a computer system? And what is the difference between the control, data, and address bus?